So continuing with the same problem that we worked on last video, which again, you can check up top. Uh, what I want is, well, what, right now, if I try to launch the program, you know, we are getting the output here on the terminal, right? Which is okay, I guess, because we have both this uh, success and this uh, some post processing goes here message that we are sort of using. But I don't really want this message from ping. I just want to know if uh, we were able to ping to that website. Did it work? Did it not? That's all I want to know. I don't want to know the specifics. How can I tell my here my ping program to stop printing on the terminal? Can we do that? In Linux? Yes, we can actually do that. Let's say we want to just output all the data into another file, right? So everything that is printed here on the terminal, I want just to be in a file separate of everything else. How do we do that? Well, first let's create a file, right? Let's uh, open and create a file. We can do so easily using the open function. So open, and this guy is actually found in fcntl uh, header. So fcntl header .h. And if I call here open is just the path to the file as we have used before with FIFOs. So here we just say, let's call it ping results.txt. That's fine. And I want O flag to be O underscore write only, but I also want it to create the file if it doesn't exist. That'd be, I think that'd be a nice feature to have. How can we do that? Uh, using the f the open function. Well, this guy, you can see this is a flag. And because they are flags, you can actually add more to them, more options to them. If I type in here, O underscore, and actually scroll back up, you'll see that there are a few, quite a few fun uh, flags that I can open the file with. So there's like a pend, a sync, and then there's our, uh, if you remember the read write or just read only. What I want is to just open it and try to create it. So there is O underscore create. I'm not sure why they ate the E at the end, but that's fine. So this is what the flag the flag is called. And in order to specify multiple flags, uh, like in many other systems, what you have to do is just uh, have a bitwise OR in between them. And since this one e has the value 0, 1, so it's just 1 in octal apparently, and uh, this one is 0, 100 in octal. Well, they are different. And once you, if you bitwise or them, they're going to be, both of them are going to be found in there. And uh, the open function is going to know that we need to create this file with these uh, parameters, right? And lastly, we need to specify with what, uh, what are the permissions for the file. So remember, we had to specify with make FIFO the permission of the file. Similarly here, we have to do that. And I'm going to just uh, specify that everybody has access to it. So I'm going to just type in 777 in octal again. And don't forget this zero is very, it is very important. It's telling C that it has to, uh, this is an octal value, not just a decimal value. Again, if I hover over it, my ID does transform this to a decimal value, which is 511. So, okay, this is very important. Um, and this open call will, well, try to open the file. If it doesn't exist, it will create it. And with those uh, permissions, so everybody could read and write to it, no problem. And it will open it and we, we could start writing into it from here onwards. I'm gonna check as well if the file is negative one, because if it is negative one, again, some error occurred. So I can just say, let's just return two or something here. Doesn't really matter at this point. And now, how do we, now we have the file, but how do we say, okay, well, we want the output of this ping program to go to, to go to our file ping results. How do we do that? Now, first I want to show you a bit of an overview as to how the file descriptor and files situation is in Linux. So here, suppose I'm talking about the child process, right? This is, uh, nothing too sketchy. We don't, we don't take a look at multiple, uh, multiple processes at the same time, just the child process. And what are file descriptors, right? We, we have been using them quite uh, a few times here. If I take a look at the code, this file here is actually a file descriptor. If you 
Hover, if you take a look at the documentation of Open, it says that it does return a file descriptor. Make FIFO does return a file descriptor. Um, when you make a pipe, those are also uh, file descriptors. A file descriptor, what it is, is just a number that is unique across a process, right? So two processes could have the same file descriptor with number three, but the same process cannot have two file descriptors with both, both being the number three. This is maintained by the operating system. And these really represent a key or a handle to an input or output resource. That could be a file, that could be the terminal input, the terminal output, or standard output, standard input, the standard error output, or it could be a pipe, and so on and so forth. Okay, they are just things that you can read or write to. And whenever you open a process, automatically Linux starts and opens certain file descriptors for you. So automatically the file descriptor with ID zero is actually linked and open to handle STD in, so the standard input. So zero is linked to the standard input. That means that, well, if you would actually call a read on zero, that would be similar to saying scanf, although no formatting, just basically read the bytes you're getting. The file descriptor with ID one is going to be the standard output. So if you write to, if for example, do a write of one, and you actually write some stuff here from a buffer, it will output on the terminal. And the file descriptor with ID2 is the standard error. So std error. This is where all the errors go to. So if you print out a message that represents an error, this is where it goes to. Usually when you launch a program, it's just going to go to the terminal. So similarly to std out, but it's gonna show up in red or something like that but they are separate, so you can actually filter them out if you want. So these three file descriptors are actually opened by default. Before you even get to the first line in main, they are opened. Okay, so we have std in, std out, and std uh, error. And whenever you actually open a file, like we did in, the, in here, so we said in file equals open of all this, this file got a file descriptor it was in this list and it was added here at the end, probably with ID three, right? And well, it did, it does point to our ping results.txt. Okay, so that's, that's fine, that, that's working right now. Uh, but what we want though, to have our ping program actually output, whatever it outputs to the terminal, to this ping results file, we're gonna have to do a bit of a trick here. And that is, we want to actually replace this this one here so that instead of pointing to std out, ping, uh, points to ping results. How do we do that? Well, in Linux, there's a dupe function. So there are many actually variants of this dupe function. There's dupe and dupe two. First, we can take a look at dupe. It takes in just a single parameter, just a single file descriptor. So here we can give it uh, the file. So this guy, this dupe, what it does is return another file descriptor for our ping results. So let's call this file2. This dupe function, it took in our file descriptor, our free here, in, and duplicated it, made another one. And it returned another file descriptor with the ID probably four, it might be another number if you have already opened some other files, but it's probably a four. And again, it just points to the same exact file here. So that's nice. You can actually have two file descriptors that point to the same file and completely read or write from it without any issues. Okay, but what's the use in that? Well, dupe by itself doesn't do anything, but there's another function called dupe2 that takes in two parameters. One is the the file descriptor that we want to actually clone or duplicate. But the second one is the value that we want the new file descriptor to actually have. Well, if we say dupe to file and we actually type in here one, well, we're actually gonna get file two equals one, but this, what this is going to do is instead of creating another value here, is it's gonna take a look at one, 
and say and take a look at the file description it's gonna find that one is in indeed it's here and first it's actually gonna close this uh, stream so it's gonna close std out completely we're no longer gonna have it so you can just delete it and then it's gonna open it again to our ping results because remember we're duplicating it so it should be the same as this guy with this new id with this new file descriptor so i'm gonna say here ping results.txt and clearly this is what we want we just duplicated this file descriptor that we have opened before into std out and for all this to work remember exactly as i said it does overwrite everything the code the memory but it doesn't change the process id nor does it change the file descriptors that are already opened so those remain that means that means that when we change the std out here right before e executing the ping program it's going to change it inside the ping program when the ping program says printf something something this printf is going to try to print to std out but std out is actually going to be a file and it's going to print to that file instead of printing out in the terminal okay so uh, this is how all this works we have opened the file we got a new file descriptor with id probably three but then we duplicated it we duplicated this guy this three into being a file descriptor with the value one which is the std out so we can change this instead of saying one we can change this to uh, basically a constant std out underscore file number and as you can see this is still just one but it is better to just use it because it is in the C standard and uh, it's most likely going to be one but on some who knows on some uh, machines it might not actually be one but you know that that's the standard output and before we finish right this is almost finished the only issue is that uh, remember we have two file descriptors <laughs> they are both open to ping results that's not really a problem but we only use one of them we use this one to well as std out for it to print into the file whatever it prints to it tries to print to std out but this guy is not used so we should just close it this guy is not no longer used even though it got duplicated it's fine we can close this and still have this opened so what we can say here is say close of uh file right our file our original id which was probably three and this file too, we don't really need it because we know it is one, right? So we can simply remove it, but just for the sake of completeness, uh, I'm going to actually print F uh, the duplicated FD and percent D backslash N file two. And I'm going to also print out in, uh, let's say in here, the FD to ping results send the file just file and if i try to launch this now you'll notice something very interesting so as you can see fd to ping results is free but we didn't get anything else we didn't get this message well we did not get this message because we have already swapped the std out right so here the std out was swapped and we print f to std out but std out was ping results so we should see the results in that file called ping results.txt which we have here if we try to open it you indeed see that the duplicated file descriptor is one right so this is what uh this guy printed but in fact we don't need this because we know it's one we can just remove this and we can also remove this printf and now if we just try to run this every single time we run this You'll notice in the terminal we don't get anything on the screen from ping but inside this ping results we actually get the statistics and everything 64 bytes google.com and everything it works very nice now there was a lot in just one single video if you didn't understand parts of it parts with regarding the open function or regarding the dupe 2 or regarding file descriptors that we have talked about be sure to let me know i might actually create another section in the whole 
a course or just create another course for these specific functions uh, because there's quite a lot to them as you can see I just kind of scratched the surface on them but I think this was very important to learn when it uh, comes to executing programs from within your programs inside C and basically changing the output of uh, programs that you're executing I think that was important for you to learn if you do have any questions leave them down in the comments below or on our discord server I make sure to answer every single one of them Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.